And now in this lecture we will find out the value of line segment X. In the drawing we have triangle ABC. We know that angle BAD equals to theta. Angle EAC is also equal equals to theta. The big angle, angle BAC, is equal to 19, 90 degrees. And we also know that side AB is equal to side AE. And we know also that BD equals to 3 units, BE equals to 7 units. And we want to find out the value of line segment EC, this line segment, that equals to X. Okay, so first of all, we will define angle DAE as alpha. Again, angle DAE equals to alpha according to our definition. And from point A, we will draw perpendicular to BC. So this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle is also equals to 90 degrees and we will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point A to BC as M and we will calculate the area of triangle ABD and then we will divide it by the area of triangle ADE. So we will calculate the ratio between the areas of triangles ABD and ADE. So the area of triangle ABD, this triangle Actually, the squared brackets is the sign for the area, it means the area of triangle ABD over the area of triangle ADE, this triangle. So, what is the area of triangle ABD? The area of triangle ABD will be equal to the base of the triangle that is BD times the height to the base the height must create 90 degrees with the base BD and you can see here that line segment AM indeed creates 90 degrees with the base BD therefore the height to the base is AM over 2 I'll repeat again, the area of triangle ABD equals to, to the base BD times the height that is AM over 2. And what is the area of triangle ADE? The area of triangle ADE will be equal to the base of the triangle that is DE times the height to the base you can see that side AM, 9 segment AM, creates 90 degrees with the base DE, therefore the height to the base is AM over 2. So the area of triangle ADE is equal to the base DE times the height to the base that is AM over 2. So here we have 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, so 2 will get cancelled. So, what is left after we cancel 2 from this expression? What is left? It is actually BD times AM 
over uh, BD times AM over DE times AM. So here we have AM in the numerator and AM in the denominator, so AM will get cancelled. And we left only with BD over DE. But it is given us in the question that BD equals to 3 units and DE equals to 7 units. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of triangle ABD over the area of triangle ADE equals to 3 over 7. But there is another way to calculate the area of triangles ABD and triangles ADE. We will take the base of the triangle ADB as AB, so the base is AB. Then the height to the base must create 90 degrees with the base AB, so from point D we will draw perpendicular to AB. So this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point D to AB as O. So DO is perpendicular to the base AB, so therefore DO will be equal to the height, to the base. So we will define DO as edge 1. Therefore, the area of triangle ABD will be equal to the base AB times the height to the base, that is edge 1 over 2. I repeat again, another way to calculate the area of triangle ABD is to multiply the base AB by the height to the base A1 over 2. Then, in the same way, we will calculate the area of triangle ADE. The area of triangle ADE, we will take the base of the triangle this, as uh, side AE, and the height to the base must create 19 degrees with the base AE. So here, from point D will draw perpendicular to AE. So this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point D to AE as K, so DK is perpendicular to the base AE, therefore the height to the base AE it is actually equal to DK, we will define DK as H2. So the height to the base AE is H2 over 2. So we found out that the area of triangle ADE is equal to the base AE times the height to the base, that is H2 over 2. Here we have 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, so, so 2 will get cancelled. And what is left after we cancel 2 from this expression? What is left? It is actually AB times H1 over DE times H2. It is given us in the question that side AB is equal to side AE. Therefore, AB over AD is 1, so AB over AD will get cancelled. In conclusion, we found out that 3 over 7 equals to H1 over H2. Now we will calculate the values of H1 and H2. So we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ADO. In this right triangle, triangle ADO, we 
we know that sinus theta equals to H1 over AD. Sinus theta equals to H1 over AD. Okay, in the right triangle, triangle AD ohm, sinus theta equals to H1 over AD, we will multiply this equation by AD, and we will get that H1 is equal to AD times sinus theta. So, you can write here that H1 is equal to AD times sinus theta, over H2. We'll calculate the value of H2. We'll focus on the right triangle, triangle AKD. In the right triangle, triangle AKD, here sinus alpha will be equal to H2 over AD. Sinus alpha equals to H2 over AD. In the right triangle, triangle ATD, sinus alpha equals to H2 over AD. We will multiply this equation by AD and we get that the value of H2 is equal to sinus alpha times AD. So here H2 equals to AD times sinus alpha. So here we have AD the numerator and AD the denominator, so AD will get cancelled. In conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 3 over 7 is equal to sinus theta over sinus alpha. Here, we will cross multiply this equation, equation number one, and we will get that according to equation number one, three times sinus alpha is equal to seven times sinus theta. So, what is the value of alpha? From the drawing, it is given us the question that angle BAC is equal to 90 degrees. from one side, but from the other side, angle BAC, the big angle, is equal to theta plus alpha plus theta. That is to say, angle BAC equals to 2 theta plus alpha. So from this equation, 2 theta plus alpha equals to angle BAC equals to 90 degrees, we will derive that 2 theta plus alpha is equal to 90 degrees.
So we actually found out that 2 theta plus alpha equals to 90 degrees. We will subtract 2 theta from this equation and we we'll get that angle alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta. So we found out that angle alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta. So we can substitute angle alpha in equation number 1 by 90 degrees minus 2 theta. So we we'll do it now and we will get that according to equation number 1 3 times sinus alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta is equal to 7 times sinus theta. We have the trigonometric identity that states that the value of sinus 90 degrees minus x is equal to cosine x and uh, from this trigonometric identity we will conclude that the value of sinus 90 degrees minus 2 theta will be equal to cosine 2 theta. Okay, now we write that according to equation number 2, according to equation number 1, 3 times sine of 90 degrees minus 2 theta is equal to cosine 2 theta according to the trigonometric identity that I presented to you it equals to 7 times sine of theta So we actually found out that according to equation number 1, 3 times cosine 2 theta equals to 7 times sine theta. We will have trigonometric identity for cosine 2 theta and the trigonometric identity for cosine 2 theta is that cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta. So we use this monotic identity and we will substitute cosine 2 theta in equation number 1 by 1 minus 2 sine square theta. We will do it now and we will get that according to equation number 1 3 times cosine 2 theta and cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 times sine square theta that equals to 7 sine theta. Here we will open the, mark, the brackets on this side of equation number 1 and we will get that 3 times 1 is 3 and 3 times minus 2 sine square theta is equal to minus 6 times sine square theta that equals to 7 times sine theta. We will add sine 6 times sine square theta and we'll subtract 3 from this equation, equation number 1 and we'll get that 6 times sine square theta
plus 7 times sine theta minus 3 is equal to 0. So we have here a quadratic equation and uh, the, general, the general formula for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Here a, b and c, this general formula for quadratic equation are the coefficients of the quadratic equation and x is the variable that we are looking for and we will find out the value of x according to a special formula for x x it is actually equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 times a times c over 2a okay and in our specific quadratic equation, the variable that we are looking for is sinus theta, so x is equal to sinus theta. The coefficient a is equal to 6. The coefficient b is equal to 7. And the coefficient c is equal to minus 3. So we We'll put the data inside the equation for x and we'll find out the value of sinus theta that is actually equal to x. So sinus theta, according to this equation for x, sinus theta is equal to minus b, b is 7, so minus b is minus 7, plus minus square root of b square, b is 7, so b square is 7 square, 7 square is 49, minus 4 times a times c, so minus 4 times a is 6, times c is minus 3 over 2a 2 times a and a is 6 so it is 2 times 6 so we get here that sinus theta is equal to minus 7 plus minus here we have square root of 49 and minus 4 times 6 is minus 24 and minus 24 times minus 7 is plus 72. So in conclusion inside the root we have 49 plus 72 over 2 times 6, 2 times 6 is 12. So we found out actually that sinus theta is equal to minus 7 plus minus 49 plus 72 is 121 over 12. And the square root of 121 is 11, so I write it down. We found out that sinus theta is equal to minus 7 plus minus the square root of 121 is 11 over 12. So we will have here two solutions that are possible for sinus theta. The first solution for sinus theta is that sinus theta is equal to minus 7 minus 11 over 12. And the second solution that are possible for sinus theta is that sinus theta is equal to minus 7 plus 11 over 12. Okay? So we'll focus on the first solution for sinus theta. The first solution 
is that sinus theta is equal to minus 7 minus 11 is minus 18 over 12. Minus 18 over 12 is minus 1.5. So we found out that sinus theta is equal to minus 1.5. But because of the fact that the function sinus can accept values from minus 1 to plus 1 and minus 1.5 is less than minus 1, that is to say it exceeds the range, the range of the values that sinus theta can receive, can accept. That is to say, sinus theta can never be equal to minus 1.5 because the range of numbers that sinus can accept is between 1 and minus 1, and minus 1.5 is less than minus 1, therefore it is incorrect answer, we will cancel this answer, and we will focus only with the Second solution, the second solution that sinus theta equals to minus 7 plus 11 is 4 over 12. Here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator of this side of the equation by 4. 4 over 4 is 1 and 12 over 4 is 3. So in conclusion, we found out that sinus theta is equal to 1 over 3. Okay, sinus theta is equal to 1 over 3. In the next step, we will focus on triangle. A, B, E, so I'll copy triangle A, B, E in the new page and we'll focus on this triangle, triangle A, B, E. So this is triangle, triangle ABE. It is given us the question that side AB is equal to side AE. Therefore, triangle ABE is an isosceles triangle because it has two sides that are equal to each other. Triangle ABE is an isosceles triangle. And the base of the of triangle ABE, it is actually BE. BE is the base. Of the isosceles triangle, triangle ABE. And AM is the height to the base BE because of the fact that it's perpendicular to 
the best B is. So we can write down that AM is the height to the best BE. And we actually have rule number one that relates to the socialist triangle. According to rule number one, the height to the base of an isosceles triangle Bisect the base. I'll repeat again on rule number one. According to rule number one, the height to the base of an isosceles triangle bisect the base. So here we have an isosceles triangle, triangle ABE. And we have the height AM to the best BE, and according to rule number one, the height AM to the best BE bisects the best BE. That is to say, BM equals to ME according to rule number one. Okay? BM equals to ME according to rule number one. Okay? Because of the fact that the height to the best AM bisects the best BE, that is to say, it divides, it divides it to two equal parts, that is to say, BM equals to ME. So, we know that BM is equal to ME, So, if we define BM as Y, then from this equation Y equals to BM equals to ME, we will conclude that ME is also equals to Y. So, actually, what is the value? of side BE, the value of side BE, from the drawing you can see that the value of side BE equals to BM plus ME, BM plus ME from one side, but BM equals to Y according to our definition, and ME is also equals to Y, so in conclusion we found out that from one side, BE is equal to 2Y. But from the other side, for the drawing, you can see that BE, BE is equal to BD plus DE. BE equals to BD plus DE. And BD is equal to 3 units. DE equals to 7 units. 3 plus 7 is 10, so we found out that BE is equal to 10 units. So, from one side, BE is equal to 2Y, and from the other side, BE equals to 10. From this equation, 10 equals to BE equals to 2Y, we will conclude that 10 equals to 2y. So we found out that 10 equals to 2y. Here we will divide this equation by 2 and we will get that y equals to 5 units. 
y equals to 5, so bm that equals to y will be equal to 5 units, and me that is also equals to y will be also equal to 5 units, me will be also equal to 5 units, so we can write here that bm is equal to 5 units bm is equal to 5 units and me is also equal to 5 units in the next step we will prove that triangles a, B, M, the right triangle A, B, M, and the right triangle A, M, E can go into each other. Okay. We prove that the right triangle triangle B, A, M And the right triangle, triangle MAE, can relate to each other. So why those two triangles can relate to each other? First of all, we know that AB is equal to AE. It is giving us the question. AB equals to AE. We write down that AB equals to AE it is given I repeat again AB equals to AE it is given as the question and we just right now found out that BM is equal to ME equals to 5 units I repeat again, BM equals to ME equals to 5 units, and we also have a common side, we can write down at AM equals to itself, AM equals to AM, it's the common side that belongs to both triangles. So, we actually found out that triangle BAM can go into triangle MAE according to side, side, side rule. I'll write it down. We found out that triangle BAM can go in. This is the sign of can go in to triangle MAE according to side 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 rule okay all the sides of triangle p a m can go to all the sides of triangle m a e therefore those two triangles can go to each other according to side 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 rule and from the fact that those two triangles can go to each other we will conclude that angle BAM is equal to angle MAE. Angle BAM is equal to angle MAE. Okay. Angle BAM is equal to angle MAE according to the rule that corresponding angles in the one triangles are equal to each other. Those two triangles can relate to each other, therefore 
the corresponding angles, that is to say angle B A M and angle M A E will be equal to each other. So if we define angle M A E as Z, angle M A E equals to Z according to our definition, from this equation angle B A M equals to angle M A E equals to Z, we will conclude that angle B A M is also equals to Z. Okay. So, what is the value of angle B A E? The value of angle B A E From one side, it equals to angle B, A, M. Plus angle M, A, E. Angle B, A, E equals to angle B, A, M plus angle M, A, E. That is to say, we know that angle B, A, M is equal to Z, so it is Z, and angle MAE is also equal to Z, so Z plus Z is 2Z, so for one side angle BAE is equal to 2Z, and uh, from the other side angle BAE is equal to theta plus alpha. Again, angle B A E is equal to theta plus alpha. It is very easy to see from the drawing that angle B A E equals to theta plus alpha. So from this equation theta plus alpha equals to angle B A E equals to 2Z, we will conclude that theta plus alpha equals to 2z, we divide this equation by 2 and we get that angle z is equal to theta plus alpha over 2. But what is angle z? Actually angle MAE is equal to z. And because of the fact that angle MAE equals to z, then angle MAE will be equal to theta plus alpha over 2 and angle MAE is also equal to Z so angle MAE is also will be equal to theta plus alpha over 2 so we can write down here that angle MAE angle MAE equals to theta plus alpha over 2 and angle BAM will be also equal to theta plus alpha over 2 Theta plus alpha over two. Okay. Here yeah, actually we found out that angle MAE is equal to Z that equals to theta plus alpha over two, and angle BAM that is also equal to 
Z i to su bihvatu teta plus alfa ove u tu. Ok, so, in the next step, I will draw the right triangle A, M, E in a new page and we will analyze the right triangle, triangle M, A, E. So, we just right now found out that angle MAE is equal to theta plus alpha over 2. ME is equal to 5 units. So, this is the right triangle, triangle ME. And we will define side AM as H. AM equals to H according to our definition. So sinus theta plus alpha over 2 in this right triangle. will be equal to ME over AM. But ME equals to 5 units and AM equals to H. So, in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, sinus theta plus alpha over 2 is equal to 5 over h. In the next step, I will copy the right triangle, triangle AMC in a new page and we will analyze triangle AMC.
According to our definition, AM equals to H. And what is the value of angle MAC? The big angle, angle MAC. From the drawing, it is very easy to see that the value of angle MAC will be equal to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. Again, the value of angle MAC will be equal to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. Okay, angle MAC equals to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. AM equals to A. What is the value of MC, of side MC? The value of side MC It equals to ME plus EC. I'll write it down. MC equals to ME plus EC. MC equals to ME plus EC. Okay. MC equals to ME plus EC. So actually, MC is equal to ME that is 5 units plus EC that is X. So in conclusion we found out that MC equals to 5 plus X. 5 plus X So here the only missing angle in the right angle triangle AMC is angle ACM. And we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, the sum of the angles in the right triangle triangle AMC must be equal to 180 degrees. That is to say, angle Angle MAC, this angle, plus 90 degrees, plus angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for. In total, the sum of those two angles must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtract 90 degrees from this equation, and we will get that angle MAC plus angle ACM are equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees is 90 degrees. So here we will subtract angle MAC from this equation and we'll get that the angle that we are looking for, angle ACM, is equal to 90 degrees minus angle MAC. Or angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for, will be equal to 90 degrees minus angle MAC. And from the drawing, you can see that angle BAC angle BAC the big angle from one side it equals to 90 degrees. It is given as the question that angle BAC equals to 90 degrees from one side. But from the other side, angle BAC equals to theta plus alpha plus theta. That is to say it equals to 2 theta plus alpha. So from this equation, 2 theta plus alpha equals to angle BAC equals to 90 degrees, we will derive that 90 degrees is equal to 2 theta plus alpha. 
therefore we can substitute 90 degrees in this equation by 2 theta plus alpha, we will do it now and we will get that we substitute 90 degrees by 2 theta plus alpha minus angle MAC. So, actually, angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for, will be equal to 2 theta plus alpha minus angle MAC. And we already found out that angle MAC equals to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. So here we will open the brackets on this side of the equation and we will get that the value of angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for, will be equal to 2 theta plus alpha minus theta plus alpha over 2 minus theta. We have minus before the bracket, so the plus sign will become negative. Minus, which is minus theta. So, In conclusion, we found out that the angle that we are looking for, that is actually angle ACM equals to 2 theta plus alpha minus theta plus alpha over 2 minus theta. So angle, the angle that we are looking for, that is angle ACM, equals to 2 theta minus theta is theta plus alpha minus theta plus alpha over 2. So here theta plus alpha minus theta plus alpha over 2 will be equal to theta plus alpha over 2. So we found out that the angle that we are looking for, angle ACM, equals to theta plus alpha over 2. So I will copy again the right triangle, triangle ACM. And we will put the value of angle ACM inside the triangle. Okay, so here we have the right triangle, triangle A and C. And We just, we just right now found out that angle ACM equals to theta plus alpha over 2. AM equals to edge according to our definition. MC, we will found out that MC equals to 5 plus x. So what is the value of tangents theta plus alpha over 2 in triangle, the right triangle, triangle AMC? Here, tangent theta plus alpha over 2, according to equation number 2, tangent theta plus alpha over 2 will be equal to AM over MC. AM equals to H. MC equals to 5 plus X. So, in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number two, tangents theta plus alpha over two is equal to h over five plus x. This is equation number two. Now I will copy equation number two 
and equation number one in a new page and recreate equation number three from equation number one and equation number two. So here we have a question, according to equation number two, we will find out the tangents theta plus alpha over two is equal to a over five plus x. And according to equation number one, we have already found out that tangents theta plus alpha over two is equal to five over h. Now, we'll create equation number three, that is the combination of equation number one with equation number two. According to equation number three, tangents theta plus alpha over two, is equal to, according to equation number 2, is equal to h over 5 plus x, while according to equation number 1, tangent theta plus alpha over 2, is equal to 5 over h. So, equation number 3 is the combination of equation number 1 with equation number 2. In the next step, we will find the value of theta plus alpha over 2. What is the value of theta plus alpha over 2? Actually, theta plus alpha over 2 is equal to theta plus alpha. We have already found out that the value of alpha, the value of angle alpha, is equal to 90 degrees minus 2 theta all divided by 2 so it is 90 degrees plus theta minus 2 theta over 2 equals to 90 degrees theta minus theta is minus theta over 2 and 90 degrees over 2 is 45 degrees minus theta over 2 so in conclusion we found out that the value of angle theta plus alpha over 2 it is actually equal to 45 degrees minus theta over 2. Okay? So here we know that if alpha equals to beta then tangents alpha will be equal to tangents beta. Therefore here tangents theta plus alpha over 2 will be equal to tangents 45 degrees minus theta over 2. Okay? And we will we have actually trigonometric identity for tangents x minus y. According to the following trigonometric identity the value of tangents x minus y is equal to tangents x minus tangents y over 1 plus tangents x times tangents y. 
So we will use this monomatic identity in order to find out the value of tangents 45 degrees on theta over 2. Okay, according to this trigonometric identity, tangent x minus y equals 2 tangent x minus tangent y over 1 plus tangent x times tangent y, we get that the value of tangent 45 degrees minus theta over 2 will be equal to tangent 45 degrees. minus tangents theta over 2 over 1 plus tangents 45 degrees times tangents theta over 2. And we know that Tangents 45 degrees is 1, so it will be equal to 1 minus tangents theta over 2 over 1 plus tangents theta over 2. And in conclusion, we actually found out that the value of tangents theta plus alpha over 2 is equal to 1 minus tangents theta over 2 over 1 plus tangents theta over 2. Okay, so the only thing that is left to find in order to find out the value of tangent theta plus alpha over 2 is to find out the value of tangent theta over 2. And the value of tangent theta over 2, we actually have a trigonometric identity for tangents theta over 2. So, according to the following trigonometric identity, the value of tangents theta over 2 is equal to sinus theta over 1 plus cosine theta. I'll repeat again. We have the trigonometric identity that states that the value of tangent theta over 2 equals to sinus theta over 1 plus cosine theta. But in the beginning of the lecture, we have already found out that sinus theta equals to 1 over 3. And we have the trigonometric identity that states that sinus square theta plus cosine square theta is equal to 1. Here we we'll subtract sine square theta from the trigonometric identity and we will and we'll get that cosine square theta is equal to 1 minus sinus square theta. Okay. Here we take a root out of this equation and we get that cosine theta equals to the square root of 1 minus sine square theta and we know that sine theta equals to 1 over 3 therefore sine square theta will be equal to 1 over 9 so we we'll substitute sine square theta here by 1 over 9 and we will get that cosine 
theta equals to the square root of 1 minus 1 over 9. 1 minus 1 over 9 is 8 over 9. And the square root of 8 is, actually 8 is 4 times 2, and the square root of 4 times 2 is, the square root of 4 is 2, and, and uh, so in conclusion the square root of 8 is 2 times square root of 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So, in conclusion, we found out that cosine theta is equal to 2 times square root of 2 over 3. And we also found out that sinus theta equals to 1 over 3. Now we can find out the value of tangent theta. We'll put the value of cosine theta and sinus theta inside the trigonometric identity for tangent uh, two, tangent theta over two, and we find out the value of tangent theta over two. So the value of tangent theta over two, according to uh, the value of cosine theta of sine theta, will be equal to sine theta that is one over three over one plus cosine theta that is two times square root of two over three. So it equals to 1 over 3. Here we multiply 1 by 3 and then we divide it by 3. And we get that 3 plus 2 times square root of 2 over 3 equals, here we have 3 in the numerator and 3 in the, in the denominator, so 3 will get cancelled. In conclusion, we found out that times theta over 2 equals to 1 over 3 plus 2 times square root of 2. So can I know that the value of tangent theta over 2 is equal to 1 over 3 plus 2 times square root of 2. Here we will simplify this expression Actually, 1 over 3 plus 2 times square root of 2. Here we will multiply this expression by 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. We multiply it by 3 minus 2 times square root of 2, and then we divide it by 3 times minus 2 times square root of 2. So in the numerator, we have, we have 3 times minus 2 times square root of 2 over here. In the denominator, we have expression that is very similar to the algebraic identity that states that a plus b times a minus b equals to a squared minus b squared. Here a equals to 3, so a squared is 3 squared, that is 9. Minus b squared, b equals to 2 times root of 2, so b squared is 2 times root of 2 squared, that is actually equals to 8. So in the denominator we have 9 minus 8. So in conclusion, we found out that this expression equals to 3 minus 2 times root of 2. And therefore, the value of tangents theta over 2, it is equal to 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. I will repeat again. The value of tangent theta over 2 equals to 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. 
Now we can find out the value of tangent alpha plus theta over 2. We know that tangent theta plus alpha over 2 it equals to 1 minus tangent theta over 2 over 1 plus tangent theta over 2. So now we put the value of tangent theta over 2 that is alpha equals to 3 minus 2 times root two of 2 inside this equation in order to find out the value of tangent theta plus alpha over 2. So we get that tangent theta plus alpha over 2 it is actually equals to 1 minus tangent theta over 2 is 3 minus 2 times root of 2 over 1 plus tangent theta over 2 that is actually equals to 3 minus 2 times root of 2. So here we have 1 minus 3 is minus 2. And minus and minus is plus, so it is plus 2 times root of 2 over 1 plus 3 is 4 minus 2 times root of 2. So it is 2 times root of 2 minus 2 over 4 plus 2 times root of 2. From the denominator we will take 2 as a common factor and inside the brackets we will have root of 2 minus 1 and from the denominator we will We'll take 2 times square root of 2 as a common factor, and inside the brackets we will have square root of 2 minus 1. So here we have 2 square minus 1 in the numerator, and we have square root of 2 minus 1 in the denominator, so it will get cancelled. We have 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, so 2 will also get cancelled. In conclusion, we found out that tangent theta plus alpha over 2 equals to 1 over square root of 2. We write it down, tangent theta plus alpha over 2 equals to 1 over square root of 2. Okay. And according to equation number 3, we have already found out that tangents theta plus alpha over 2 is equal to h over 5 plus x 
that's equals to 5 over h and we just right now found out that second set of plus alpha over 2 is also equals to 1 over square root of 2. So from this long equation we derive that equation number 3 that 5 over h is equals to 1 over square root of 2. So we can write down that 5 over h is equals to 1 over square root of 2. We will cross multiply this equation and we will get that h equals to 5 times square root of 2. Okay. And from the log equation of equation number 3, we will derive that a over 5 over a over 5 plus x equals to 1 over square root of 2 h over 5 plus x is equal to 1 over square root of 2. We have already found out that h equals to 5 times square root of 2, so we substitute h in this equation by 5 times square root of 2. And we get that 5 times square root of 2 over 5 plus x is equal to 1 over square root of 2. Here we cross multiply this equation and we get that 5 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 is equal to 5 plus x. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 and 2 times 5 is 10, so in conclusion we found out that 10 equals to 5 plus x. We will subtract 5 from this equation and we will get that x equals to 5 units. So the answer to the question that x that is also equals to CE is equal to 5 units. Okay, in the next step I will summarize the lecture. So we can write here also that x that is also equals to ec equals to 5 units. That is the answer to the question. Okay, so actually we have here triangle ABC. We know that AB is equal to AE. We also know that BD equals to 3 units, DE equals to 7 units, angle BAD equals to theta, and angle EAC is also equals to theta. And we also know that angle BAC is equal to 90 degrees, and we want to find out the value of line segment EC that is also equal to X. So in the first step, we, def we defined angle D A C E is alpha, and from point A we draw perpendicular to B C. So this is equal to 90 degrees, and this is also equal to 90 degrees. And we define the touching point of the perpendicular from point A to B E as M. Okay, then we calculated the ratio between the area of triangle A B D to the area of triangle A D E. The area of triangle ABD equals to the base of the triangle that is BD times the height to the base that is AM over 2. The base BD times the height AM over 2 and the area of triangle ADE is equal to the base DE times the height to the base that is AM over 2. Again, equals to the base DE times the height to the base that is AM over 2. Here we have 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, so 2 will get cancelled. And after we cancel 2, we have, we left with BD times AM equals to BD times AM over DE over AM. BD times AM times DE over uh, DE times AM. So we have AM in the numerator and AM in the denominator, so AM will get cancelled. And we left only with 
BD over DE. BD equals to three units, DE equals to seven units. In the next step, we calculated the areas of triangles ABD and AED in a different way. In triangle ABD, we took side AB as the base of the triangle, so it is the area of triangle ABD will be equal to the base of the triangle that is AB times the I to the base that is DO, and we define DO as edge 1 over 2. The area of triangle ABD equals to the base AB times the I to the base that is edge 1 over 2. Likewise, we calculated the area of triangle ADE if the base of the triangle is AE in this case, and the I to the base is DK that equals to H2 over 2. Again, the area of triangle AD equals to the best AE times the I to the best that is H2 over 2. Here we have 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, so 2 will get cancelled. And we left only with AB times H1 over DE times H2. Because of the fact that it is given us the question that AB equals to DE, AB over DE will get will be equal to 1, so it will get cancelled and be left only with edge 1 over edge 2. So what is the value of edge 1? If we focus on the right triangle, triangle AOD, here sinus theta equals to edge 1 over AD. In the right triangle, triangle ADO, sinus theta equals to edge 1 over AD. We multiply this equation by edge 1, we multiply this equation by AD, and we got that edge 1 equals to AD sinus theta. So we can write here that edge 1 equals to AD times sinus theta. In the same way, we calculated the, we calculated the value of edge 2. In the right triangle, triangle ADO sinus alpha equals to edge 2 over AD. In the right triangle, triangle ADK, triangle ADK, the right triangle, Sinus alpha equals to dk over ad or h2, dk equals to h2, so it is h2 over ad. Okay, I'll repeat again. The right triangle triangle akd, sinus alpha equals to h2 over ad. We multiply this equation by ad and we got that h2 equals to ad times sinus alpha. So we can write here that h2 equals to ad times sinus alpha. We have hd in the numerator and hd in the denominator, so hd will get cancelled. In conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 3 over 7 equals to sinus theta over sinus alpha. The course multiplied this equation, equation number 1, and we found out that 3 times sinus theta, 3 times sinus alpha equals to 7 times sinus theta. Then we found out the value of alpha. What is the value of angle BAC? Angle BAC from one side it equals to 90 degrees, but from the other side it equals to theta plus alpha plus theta. That is to say, from the other side it equals to 2 theta plus alpha. Okay, I'll repeat again. Angle BAC from one side is equal to 19 degrees and from the other side it equals to 2 theta plus alpha. From this equation we will conclude that 2 theta plus alpha equals to 90 degrees. 2 theta plus alpha equals to 90 degrees. We subtracted 2 theta from this equation and found out that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta. Therefore we can substitute angle alpha in equation number 1 by 90 degrees minus 2 theta. We did it and we got that three times and sinus alpha uh, and uh, three times sinus alpha and alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta that equals to seven times sinus theta so in conclusion we found out that going to equation number one three times sinus 90 degrees minus 2 theta equals to seven times sinus theta here we have the trigonometric identity that sinus 90 degrees minus x equals to cosine x According to this trigonometric identity, we will get that sinus 90 degrees minus 2 theta equals to cosine 2 theta. Therefore, we can substitute sinus 90 degrees minus 2 theta in equation number 1 
by cosine 2 theta. We did it and we got that we found it to equation number 1, 3 times cosine 2 theta equals to 7 times sine theta. We have the monometric identity for cosine 2 theta. According to the following uh, trigonometric identity, the value of cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta. Therefore, we can substitute cosine 2 theta in equation number 1 by 1 minus 2 sine square theta. We did it and we got that 3 times and cosine theta is 1 minus 2 times square theta according to this trigonometric identity that equals to 7 times sine of theta. We open the brackets on this side of equation number 1. Here, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times minus 2 sine square theta is minus 6 times sine square theta. That equals to 7 times sine theta. We added 6 times sine square theta from, uh, to this equation and we subtracted 3. And, uh, and in conclusion, we found out that, that 6 times sine square theta plus 7 times sine square theta minus 3 equals to 0. So we have here a quadratic equation. Well, sinus theta is the missing variable. And the general formula for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. If a, b, and c in this quadratic equation are the coefficients of the quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for. And we will find out the value of x according to a special formula for x. x it is actually equal to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 times ac over 2a. And in our specific quadratic equation, the missing variable, the, the variable that we are looking for is sinus theta, so x equals to sinus theta, the coefficient a equals to 6, the coefficient b equals to 7, and the coefficient c equals to 3. So we put the data inside the equation for x and we found out the value of sinus theta because x equals to sinus theta. And we found out that sinus theta equals to minus b, b is 7, so minus b is minus 7, plus minus square root of b square. b is 7, so b square is 7 square, 7 square is 49, minus 4 times a is 6, and c is minus 3, so it is minus 4 times 6, times minus 3, over 2 times a, and a is 6, so it is 2 times 6. So we found out that sinus theta equals to minus 7, plus minus 49, and 4 times 6, minus 4 times 6 is minus 24, and minus 24 times minus 3 is 72. So in conclusion, inside the root we have 49 plus 72, over 2 times 6 is 12. 49 plus 72 is 121. So in conclusion, we found out that sinus theta equals to minus 7, plus minus 49 plus 72 is 121 over 12, and the square root of 121 is 11. So in conclusion, we found out that sinus theta equals to minus 7 plus minus 11 over 12. So we have here two solutions that are possible for sinus theta. The first solution for sinus theta is that sinus theta equals to minus 7 minus 11 over 12. And the second solution for sinus theta is that sinus theta equals to minus 7 plus 11 over 12. We focused on the First solution here, sinus theta equals to minus 7 minus 11, that is minus 18. So, in conclusion, sinus theta equals to minus 18 over 12, that is minus 1.5. But sinus theta can never be equal to minus 1.5. Why? Because the range of numbers that it can accept it is actually from minus 1 and plus 1 and minus 1.5 is less than minus 1, so it exceeds the range of numbers that sinus theta can receive. Therefore, it is incorrect answer, and the only answer that is left is the second answer, that sinus theta equals to minus 7 plus 11, over 12. Minus 7 plus 11 is 4, and, and uh, so it is 4 over 12, we divided both the numerator and the denominator of this, on this side of the equation by 4, and we got that 4 over 4 is 1, and 12 over 4 is 3. So in conclusion, we found out that sinus theta equals to 1 over 3. Okay, then we actually focused on uh, the right triangle 
actually focus on triangle, the associated triangle, triangle ABE. And the we focus on the associated triangle triangle ABE. Is the associated triangle triangle ABE? Why triangle ABE is the associated triangle? Why? Because it is given as the question that AB equals to AE. And whenever you have two sides in the triangle that are equal to each other, then you have an associated triangle. And we have in the in triangle ABE two sides that are equal to each other, that is to say AB equals to AE. Therefore, triangle ABE is an associated triangle. And the base of the associated triangle, triangle ABE, is BE. And we have the I to the base is AM. Why? Because AM creates 90 degrees with the base BE. Therefore, the I to the base is AM. The I to the base BE is AM. And we have rule number one. According to rule number one, the I to the base of an associated triangle bisects the base. So here, according to rule number one, the I to AM to the base BE in an associated triangle, triangle ABE, bisects the base BE. That is to say, it divides it to two equal parts. That is to say, BM is equal to ME. So according to rule number one, BM equals to ME. Okay, because of the fact that the I to AM bisects the base BE, we conclude that BM equals to ME according to rule number one. Okay, then we have... So, if we define BM as Y, then from this equation, Y equals to BM equals to ME, we will conclude that ME is also equals to Y, so we know that BM equals to Y and ME is also equals to Y. What is the value of BE? From the drawing, you can see that BE equals to BM plus ME. BE equals to BM plus ME, but BM equals to Y, and ME is also equals to Y. So in conclusion, BE equals to Y plus Y, that is 2Y. So from one side, side BE equals to 2Y. But from the other side, what is the value of side BE? The value of side BE equals to BD plus DE. BD equals to 3 units, D equals to 7 units. In conclusion, we found out that BE equals to 3 plus 7, that is 10 units. So, so from the other side, BE equals to 10 units. From one side, BE equals to 10 units. And from the other side, BE equals to 2Y. So from this equation, 10 equals to BE equals to 2Y. We will conclude that 10 equals to 2Y. Here we divided this equation by 2 and we got that y equals to 5. But what is y? y is bm. So if y equals to 5, then bm will be also equal to 5. And y is also me. y equals to me. So if uh, y equals to 5, then me will be also equal to 5. So we can write here that bm equals to 5 units and me is also equal to 5 units. Then we prove that those two right triangles, triangle ABM and triangle AME, can go into each other. Why those two triangles can go into each other? First of all, we know that AB equals to AE, according to what is given as the question, AB equals to AE. We just right now found out that BM equals to ME equals to 5 units, and AM equals to itself. AM is a common side that belongs to both triangles. So we actually proved that triangle BAM can go in. So triangle A and E according to side 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 rule. And from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we will conclude that angle B A M is equal to angle M A E. Angle B A M is equal to angle B A M. <laughs> angle A M is equal angle B A M equals to angle M A E. 
Okay? According to the old the corresponding angles it can go into the angles are equal to each other. Those two triangles can go into each other. Therefore the corresponding angles that is to say angle B A M and angle M A E will be equal to each other. So if we define angle M A E as Z, here angle M A E equals to Z, then from this equation angle B A M equals to angle M A E equals to Z, we will conclude that angle B A M is also equal to Z. Okay, so what is the value of angle B A E? From one side angle B A E equals to angle B A M plus angle M A E. Again, angle B A M equals to angle B A M plus angle M A E, that is actually Z plus Z, that is 2Z. So from one side angle B A E equals to 2Z. But from the other side, from the drawing, you can see that angle B A E is equal to theta plus alpha. So from the other side, angle B A E equals to theta plus alpha. So from this equation, theta plus alpha equals to angle B A E equals to 2Z, we will conclude that theta plus alpha equals to 2Z. We divided this equation by 2 and we got that angle z equals to theta plus alpha over 2. But what is angle z? Angle z is the actually angle m a e. They are equal to each other. So if z equals to theta plus alpha over 2, then angle m a e will be also equal to theta plus alpha over 2. And angle b a m is also equal to z. So if z equals to theta plus alpha over 2, then angle B A M will be also equal to theta plus alpha over 2. So we can write here that angle B A M equals to theta plus alpha over 2, and angle M A E, this angle, is also equal to theta plus alpha over 2. Then I copied the right triangle, triangle M A E, in the new page, and we analyze the right triangle, triangle A M E. We have here the right triangle, triangle A and E. We just right now found out that angle M A E equals to theta plus alpha over 2. A M equals to edge according to our definition. And M E, you can see it here that M E equals to 5 units. Okay, M E equals to 5 units. So here, tangent theta plus alpha over 2 will be equal to Me over Am. Me equals to 5 units, Am equals to H. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, sinus theta plus alpha over 2 equals to 5 over H. Then we focused on the right triangle, triangle AMC. I copied the right triangle, triangle AMC, and we analyzed the right triangle, triangle AMC. What is the value of angle MAC? The value of angle MAC? It is very easy to see that the value of angle MAC equals to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. Again, the value of angle, M, the value of angle MAC equals to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. Okay? And what is the value of MC, MC equals to ME plus EC. Here MC equals to ME plus EC. But ME equals to 5 units. EC equals to X. So in conclusion, we found out that MC equals to X plus 5. So AM equals to H according to our definition. We just right now found out that MC equals to 5 plus X. And the only missing uh, angle here is angle ACM, is the angle that we are looking for. And we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, and especially in triangle ACM. So, this angle that is actually angle MAC, plus this angle that is 90 degrees, plus this angle that is angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for, in, co in total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtracted 90 degrees from this equation, and we found out that angle ACM plus angle Angle MAC plus angle ACM equals to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees is 90 degrees. We subtracted angle MAC from this equation and we found out that angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for, equals to 90 degrees 
minus angle MAC. So angle ACM equals to 90 degrees. What is 90 degrees? Actually, uh, here we know that angle BAC angle BAC equals to from one side angle BAC equals to 90 degrees it is given as the question but from the other side angle BAC equals to 2 theta plus alpha I repeat again angle BAC from one side equals to 90 degrees and from the other side it equals to 2 theta plus alpha from this equation we will derive that 90 degrees equals to 2 theta plus alpha therefore we can substitute 90 degrees in this equation by 2 theta plus alpha. We did it and we got that angle ACM, that the angle that we are looking for, equals to 2 theta plus alpha, that is 90 degrees, minus angle MAC. But we have already found out that angle MAC equals to theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. Okay, so I can write here that angle ACM, the angle that we are looking for, equals to 2 theta plus alpha, minus angle ACM, that is actually theta plus alpha over 2 plus theta. We open the brackets here and found out that angle ACM equals to 2 theta plus alpha, minus theta plus alpha over 2, minus theta. 2 theta minus theta is theta, so we have here theta plus alpha minus theta plus alpha over 2 and theta plus alpha minus theta plus alpha over 2 is equal to theta plus alpha over 2 therefore the angle that we are looking for angle ACM is equal to theta plus alpha over 2 and we know that AM equals to X because of the definition we found uh, that uh, CM equals to X plus 5 so here times theta plus alpha over 2 will be equal to AM over MC AM equals to H, MC equals to 5 plus X, so in conclusion we found out that according to equation number 2, tangent theta plus alpha over 2 equals to H over 5 plus X. So we have two equations for tangent theta plus alpha over 2. We uh, wrote down the two equations in this page, this is equation number 2, this is equation number 1, and from equation number two and uh, equation number one, we derived equation number three, that is the combination of equation number one with equation number two. And according to equation number three, we found out that the value of tangent theta plus alpha over two, from, uh, according to equation number two, it equals to h over five plus x. While according to equation number one, it equals to five, five over h. So in conclusion, according to equation number 3, tangent theta plus alpha over 2 equals to h over 5 plus x, that equals also to 5 over h. Then we found out the value of tangent theta plus alpha over 2. The value of tangent theta plus alpha over 2, it equals to theta, and alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta. We have already found out that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus 2 theta, so we can substitute alpha by 90 degrees minus theta, we did it, and we got that theta plus alpha over 2 equals to theta plus 90 degrees minus 2 theta over 2. We open the bucket here, and we got here 90 degrees plus theta minus 2 theta over 2. 90 degrees over 2 is 45 degrees, and the theta minus theta is minus theta, so in conclusion we found out that theta plus alpha over 2 equals to 45 degrees minus theta over 2. Theta plus alpha over 2 equals to 45 degrees minus theta over 2. And if alpha equals to beta, then tangent alpha will be also equal to tangent beta. That is to say, tangent theta plus alpha over 2 must be equal to tangent 45 degrees minus theta over 2. We use the trigonometric identity of tangent x minus y equals to tangent x minus tangent y over 1 plus tangent x times tangent y in order to find out the value of tangent 45 degrees minus 2 theta over 2. And according to this trigonometric identity, the value of times 45 degrees minus theta over 2 will be equal to times 45 degrees minus times theta over 2 over 1 plus times 45 degrees times times theta over 2. But times 45 degrees is, is equal to 1. So here, times 
Tarius Rot Sifal degrees is one minus ten over two over one plus Tarius Rot Sifal degrees is one. So in the denominator we will have one plus Tarius theta over two. So in conclusion, we found out that Tarius theta plus alpha over two equals to one minus Tarius theta over two over one plus Tarius theta over two. So the only thing that is left to do is to find out the value of Tarius theta over two. And in this way, we find out also the value of tangent theta plus alpha over 2. And, and uh, for tangent theta over 2, we have the trigonometric identity that states that the value of tangent theta over 2 equals to sinus theta over 1 plus cosine theta. We already found out that sinus theta is equal to 1 over 3. And we have the trigonometric identity that states that sinus square theta plus cosine square theta equals to 1. We subtracted sine square theta from this equation and found out that cosine square theta equals to 1 minus sine square theta. We took out of this equation and found out that cosine 2 theta equals to 1 minus sine square theta. We know that sine theta equals to 1 over 3. So sine square theta will be equal to 1 over 9. So we can substitute sine square theta by 1 over 9. And we found out that cosine theta equals to the square root of 1 and sine square theta is 1 over 9, so and 1 minus 1 over 9 is 8 over 9, and the uh, square root of n is 2 times square root of 2, the square root of 9 is 3. So in conclusion, we found out that cosine theta equals to 2 times square root of 2 over 3, and sine theta equals to 1 over 3. Now we can put the values of cosine theta and sine theta in this trigonometric identity, and we will find out that the value of sine theta over 2. So according to this trigonometric identity, tangent theta over 2 equals to sine of theta, that is 1 over 3, over 1 plus cosine theta, that is 2 times root of 2 over 3. So we have 1 over 3. Here we multiply the 1 by 3, and then we divide it by 3 in order to overcome factor of this expression. And we got that 3 times root of 2, 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is 1. So we left with tangent theta over 2 that is equal to 1 over 3 plus 2 times square root of 2. Then we simpli simplify this equation. We found out that tangent theta over 2 equals to 1 over 3 plus 2 times square root of 2. And we simplify this expression. We multiply it by 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. And then we divide it by 3 times square root of 2. And uh, we got in the numerator we have 3 times square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and in the denominator we have expression that is very similar to the algebraic identity that states that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square. a equals to 3, so a square is 3 square, is 3 square is 9, and b equals to 2 times square root of 2, and 2 times square root of 2 square is 8. So in conclusion, in the denominator we have 9 minus 8, and in the numerator we have 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. And everything divided by 1 will be the same number. So in conclusion, we found out that tangent theta over 2 is equal to 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. So according to equation number 3, we already found out that uh, actually now we have uh, and the equation of tangent theta plus alpha over 2 that is equal to 1 minus tangent theta over 2 over 1 plus tangent theta over 2 and uh, we know that tangent theta over 2 equals to 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. So here we will get that tangent theta plus alpha over 2 equals to 1 minus tangent theta over 2 is 3 minus 2 times square root of 2 over 1 plus tangent theta over 2 is, ten, uh, is 3 minus 2 times square root of 2. So here we will have 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Minus and minus is plus, so in the numerator we have minus 2 plus 2 times square root of 2. Over 1 plus 3 is 4, minus 2 times square root of 2. So we have in the numerator 2 times square root of 2, minus 2, and in the denominator we have 4 minus 2 times square root of 2. So from the numerator we took 2 as a common factor, and inside the brackets we have square root of 2 minus 1. And uh, from the denominator, we took 2 times square root of 2 as a common factor, and inside the brackets, we have square root of 2 minus 1. Square root of 2 minus 1 and square root of 2 minus 1 is 1, so it will get cancelled. 
two about two is one, it's, it's a, and it is also we get cancelled, and we left only with one over square root of two. So in conclusion, we found out that tangent theta plus alpha over two equals to one over square root of two. And according to equation number three, we have already found out that tangent theta plus alpha over two equals to h over five plus x, that's equals to five over h. And we just right now found out that tangent theta plus alpha over two equals to one over square root of two. So from this long equation, equation number three, we will, we will derive that five over h equals to one over square root of two. We first multiplied this equation and found out that h equals to five times square root of two. Then, from this long equation, we derive that h over 5 plus x is also equal to 1 over square root of 2. And we have already found out that h equals to 5 times square root of 2, so we can substitute h by 5 times square root of 2. We did it, and we got that 5 times square root of 2 or over 5 plus x is equal to 1 over, square, uh, 1 over square root of 2. We can also multiply this equation, and we found out that 5 times square root of 2 times square, uh, times square root of 2 equals to 5 plus x. If square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, and 2 times 5 is 10. So in conclusion, we found out that 10 equals to 5 plus x. We subtracted 5 from this equation, and we found out that x equals to 5 units. So the answer to the question that x, that we, the variable that we are looking for, that is also equal to CE is equal to 5 units. I repeat again, the value of x, the value of line segment x that is also equal to uh, CE is equal to 5 units. Okay, thank you very much.